Welcome back everyone to my own personal look at all the eight Harry Potter flicks. Right now it's five down and three more to go, so let's not waste any time. Let's dive right into Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince. So our movie begins in a train station as Dumbledore finds Harry and takes him to see an old friend of his, Horace Slughorn, to try and convince him to teach again at Hogwarts. Raspberry. Horace, do you mind if I take this? What? I do love knitting patterns. Oh, phew. For a moment there, I thought he had that in his hand. So after a bit of reverse psychology, Slughorn accepts the proposal, and now that Harry is of normal use, Dumbledore tries to be funny by dumping him into a bog outside the burrow. I just hope Fred and George would slip Dumbledore a few special treats, if you get my drift. Hmm. A lot. Is he up there with you? Of course not. I think I'll know if my best friend was in my room, wouldn't I? Is that an owl I heard? You haven't seen him, have you? Apparently he's wandering about the house. Really? Really? Really, really? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the Potter movie's folklore is just so screwed up. Underage wizards and witches cannot use magic outside of school. And it's happened so many times throughout the series. I mean, even Harry uses one of the unforgivable curses in the previous film. Didn't anyone give a shit? Uh, excuse me, Minister? Hmm? Young Mr. Potter used the Cruciatus curse? Eh. But you do know that's unforgivable, right? Ah, forgive him. So after such leniency, Bellatrix appears to be conducting some sort of ceremony between Snape and Draco's mother Narcissa. Will you, Severus Snape? Take Narcissa to be a lawfully wedded wife? I will. Hey, but do you reckon they get married like that in the wizarding world? By making the unbreakable vow? Now that would be commitment right there. If either the husband or wife cheat, they die. That's totally barbaric. <laughs> To the cauldron, handsome. Hello, ladies. Five gallons. Gosh, me. Five gallons. I'm your brother. Ten gallons. <sighs> okay, I know they're identical twins, but no two people have the ability to say the exact same thing at the exact same time. It's like you find a twin, and we started saying the exact, exact same, same thing, thing at the exact, exact same, same time. time. Hello. 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 You I'm are an asshole. asshole. God damn it! How <laughs> <laughs> oh. are Fred and George doing it? Half the alley's closed down. Fred reckons people need a laugh these days. I reckon he's right. I reckon you gave Fred and George our tribe's atonement prize money. You know, like you did in the book. But I guess we're to assume the poor Weasley family just conjured a thousand galleons from their own anuses. That's horrible. So after a little running with Malfoy in the train, Harry arrives on the grounds. Okay, what's for this film's obsession with killing and maiming birds? I mean, now the word the birds will revolt or something. Well, next, the movie. <laughs> 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 Oh. Everyone will please not panic. What am I doing? I have a mover or of you. <laughs> Proceed to the potions class. A tiny vial of liquid luck for the student who, in the hour that remains, manages to brew an acceptable draft of living death. Should they really be learning how to make something like that? An acceptable draft of living death. Well, Harry gets the upper hand here as he takes out a book belonging to the Half-Blood Prince, which contains different instructions to all the other books. Merlin's beard. It is perfect. So perfect, I dare say one drop would kill us all. Again, what are these teachers on when they're teaching teenagers how to make poisonous flubbers? I mean, what's next? Today, students, we're going to be learning how to use the great muggle invention that is the handgun. Here's the trigger. Yeah, pull it like so. Ah! Who wants to have a go? 
So after how to maim and kill human beings 101, we cut to our next scene as Ron is trying out for Keeper and Quidditch. <laughs> Hang on movie, no, 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 movie, no, 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 no. You cannot have a shot like that in a 12A movie. I mean, my God, how much more phallic could it get? It's not held by Hermione's face when she sees this. I mean, what do you think she's thinking? Ugh, what a jerk. But man, he must have a really big... Silence! I've seen it. So after a Quidditch match complete with outfits that look like they belong in the West End rendition of The Lion King, and accidents that look lethal as hell, Jesus! We see Ron making out with Lavender Brown. Hermione doesn't take it too well. A pugno. Jeez, again, what's with this film's obsession with killing innocent little birds? Still makes your friend. Likes to work her mouth too, doesn't she? Oh, like that line can't be misinterpreted. I swore to protect you. I made the unbreakable vow. I don't need protection. I already have chlamydia. So after that disturbing set of underlying messages, Harry and Co head back to the Weasley home for Christmas, but the Death Eaters attack as the group gets lured out into the open. But whilst distracted, the Death Eaters set fire to the burrow. Now get ready people for a performance which just screams, I don't give a shit. Oh my god. His wife could be burning alive and all I can conjure out of his lips is... Molly. But luck would have it, every single person is okay. Why the f*** did the filmmakers include this scene? It wasn't even in the book. Okay, it's nice to have a bit of action, but it's got to have a point. Just kill off one of the Weasley twins or something, we've always got the other one. Can't make any promises, of course. Skip to the next scene as Harry finds out that Malfoy hexed a fellow student. So he uses a spell that he learned from the Half-Blood Prince book called Sectum Sempra, which the book says he should use for enemies. But what do you know, it almost makes Malfoy bleed to death. And Harry's all shocked about this? So Junior convinces him to get rid of the book. Oh my god, could that hand get any closer? Surely that shot was meant to look like that. I mean, all you gotta do is crop it out and yeah, I'd play it back and forth, but I'm afraid my video would get flagged. Still no luck with Slughorn then, I take it. Luck. That's it. All I need is a bit of luck. And new rims for your glasses, apparently. Now I have to mention at this point about what I think makes a good actor. Possibly the most important thing is to be able to convey different moods to the audience well. Happiness is something that Daniel Radcliffe really struggles with. I know, but I've got a really good feeling about Hagrid. I feel it's, it's the place to be tonight. I'm acting! No. So it appears the liquid look works as Harry quickly finds Slughorn. Surely you realise I can't allow you to go roaming the ground by yourself? Well then by all means come along, sir. What's he looking at? Oh. Which was <laughs> Okay, it's official. The movie is high. Oh, and then suddenly... So whilst Hagrid recovers from his overdose, Harry manages to coax Slughorn's memory out of him, as it turns out Riddle was interested in the dark magical properties of Horcruxes, which allowed him to split his soul seven times. Instance seven. Seven. Merlin's beard, Tom. Ugh, stop saying Merlin's beard, it wasn't even clever the first time you said it. Merlin's beard! Merlin's beard. Merlin's beard. Merlin's beard. So yeah, there are seven Horcruxes and Dumbledore asks Harry to help him destroy them. You need to shave, my friend. <laughs> this is coming from a man who has a four foot long beard. So enough chip chat, Harry and Dumbledore are for it to where the next Horcruxes. 
Hey Dumbledore, this scene will look great in the trailer. Exactly. Just let the wind blow in your hair and look off into the distance. So the two arrive at the location of the Horcrux as it's underneath a goblet of water. Dumbledore's under the impression that in order to access the Horcrux, he must drink the water? Don't you will stop, yes, you will stop, but only, only if you keep Please. drinking. Don't make me I'm sorry, sir. Drink it! You must drink it! Done. Order. 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 Agumente. Order. What's with these idiots? This is how you do it. Agumente. Or even better yet, Cidermente. Sheesh. Have you ever noticed Harry Potter sucks? Yes, now you mention it. But Dumbledore saves him as they get back to Hogwarts. Unfortunately, a whole lot of Death Eaters are waiting for Dumbledore. Well done, Draco. Uh, you do realise that those two are nephews, right? Well, let's see, we've had phallic symbols, bad language, nudity, scenes of a sexual nature, paedophilia. I can touch you. And we can top it all off now by adding incest. Can we panic now? Sirius, please. Have a cadaver. Oh, and now we can add murder. <laughs> Dumbledore's body must be pretty screwed up after a fall like that. <laughs> what? He's completely and utterly intact. In fact, it looks better now he's dead. What is this? Is this to bring him back to life or something? I believe in Dumbledore. Nope, that did nothing. Toss him. Told you it wouldn't work. And so we end that movie with a shot of... Fox? Oh my god, a bird that survived! Go! Fly away! Before Warner Brothers feeds you to the crew! <gasps> Who is aiming a gun? <gasps> ah. So, Half-Blood Prince, is it a movie that's as good as everyone says it is? Well, this is just my opinion, but mm, no. Although it depends on what you look for in a Harry Potter movie. For me, this film focuses way too much on the relationships between the characters, and this isn't really something that appeals to me. I mean, I'm a guy, I want to see shit blow up! There isn't nearly enough action in this movie compared to the previous ones, and it really annoyed me when they didn't show the final battle between the students and the Death Eaters at the end of the book. That was the part I was most looking forward to. The humour in this movie is very mixed. On one hand, it can be pretty funny. Did you and Jenny do it then? What? And I just love the look on Snape's face here. Travelling where? But there are times where I don't get what's supposed to be funny. One boy, Robbie Fenwick, did bite my father once. He needed ten stitches. <laughs> but there are two things I have to commend this movie for. One is the casting. Almost every character I see in these movies is pretty much exactly how I envision them in the book. And the other thing is the outstanding cinematography which really fits the tone of the movie. That said, the lack of very important scenes from the book and the two stronger focus on high school drama and not on duking out with a Dark Lord who's supposedly at large make this movie the worst Harry Potter movie for me. But I knew this movie's more like Feather for the last chapter where Voldemort actually makes an appearance. So let's see if Deathly Hallows fares any better when I take a look at Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows Part 1. 
that review is coming soon.